Now we're going to take a look at a more advanced Ajax application and this is a live search application using Google Suggest. You've already seen how Google Suggest works. This application shows you how to connect to Google Suggest behind the scenes using Ajax and perform a live search. For example, if you type a here, then you get all the possibilities. These are these possibilities are recovered from Google Suggest, and a J further narrows you down to these values. For example, there's Ajax. You click this hyperlink, you'll be taken to the Google page, as you see here, and as the entries for Ajax. So as you see, it's a very nice low application. It uses Google Suggest behind the scenes, connecting to Google Suggest via Ajax. We're going to take a look at how that works now in the code. It starts off with a text field, and the we're connecting the onKeyUp event attribute to a function named getSuggest, passing the event object to getSuggest. So when the user enters text into the text field, and the key goes the key that they've just typed goes up we're going to call the get suggest method get suggest function in javascript passing at the event object here's what the get suggest function looks like in javascript it's passed a event object for the key stroke that just occurred and actually i'm afraid this this is where you find that javascript already diverges between browsers in Netscape and Firefox, you are indeed past a key event object. However, you're not past a key event object in Internet Explorer. Instead, you have to use the window.event object. And so here we're going to use a little bit of JavaScript to fill the key event object. If it's not already filled, if it doesn't exist, that's this is the JavaScript tertiary operator, question mark, colon. If key event does exist, then you are going to just copy it over again into the key event variable and if it does not exist you're going to use instead window.event so this is this part is for execution in Firefox and Netscape and this part is if you're executing the page in Internet Explorer also you can determine which HTML control caused the event with the key events dot target property if key event target exists, then you're working with the Firefox or Netscape brand of, of browsers, and otherwise you need to get the key event source element if you're using working with the Internet Explorer. So when you're done with this code, the key event object holds the object that corresponds to the actual key event, and the in other words, the the key up event in this case, and the input variable holds the object that, that produced the event, which in this case is going to be the text field displayed to the user. So we're going to check here to make sure that key event dot type equals key up, to, just to make sure to confirm that the user did indeed release the key, in which case we can start to search for matches to the partial search term they've already entered into the text field. And so we first check to see if there is data in the input field. This is the input field. Now holds the text field object in the web page. And if there is text in it, then its value property will be non-null. And so you say if input.value means if there is text entered that the user has already entered as a partial search term, then we're going to call the function getData to use Ajax to connect to Google Suggest behind the scenes. We're going to do that using a PHP file, google.php. We're going to pass the information that the user has already entered as the parameter QU using the get HTTP method. We're going to connect to a PHP file which will in turn connect to Google Suggest and we're going to pass the partial search term the user has already entered using the parameter QU for query, short for query. Otherwise, if there is no text inside the input text element, then we're going to simply clear that element like this, as you see here. I'm going to say target div, inner HTML. We're just going to put an empty div element inside it because 
if there is no text inside the text field, then what's probably happened is the user has deleted the text in the text field because there was a key up event that occurred, and so we want to clear the text field as you see here. Okay, so now we're calling the get data function with this URL, the google.php file, which we're going to see in a minute, with the setting the QU parameter to the partial search term that the user has entered. It's going to be QU for query. So what does the get data function look like? Here's the get data function, and it looks a lot like you're already familiar with. It's going to use an XML HTTP request object, and it's going to assign a callback function to the to that object's on ready state change property, as you see here. And the unique part of this is it's going to get from the XML HTTP request object, the response text sent back from Google, and it is going to evaluate, it's going to use the JavaScript eval method to evaluate that response text as JavaScript. That's the key here. Google suggests we'll send back actual JavaScript to execute. That JavaScript is going to be in the form of a call to a function named send RPC done. We're going to see about this in the next segment coming up, the next movie coming up. But that is the key here that the Google Suggest works by sending back JavaScript, which allows you to connect to Google Suggest and to handle its return value. And the eval method will actually evaluate the, re the JavaScript that Google Suggest sends back. It will be in the form of a call to this send RPC done function, which we're going to take a look at in the next movie. But that's the important thing to realize when you're working with Google Suggest, is it's going to send back JavaScript in the form of a call to a function named send RPC done. So you have to have send RPC done, the send RPC done function available in your JavaScript. Okay, so that's the idea. We're going to send a partial term to this google.php file, which we're going to see in a second, using the QU parameter set to the input value, in other words, the parcel search term that the user has entered.